Well, Gary, this might be one of the most unique trucks we've had here at WFO. Well, it's uh, it's one of the more interesting uh, builds that I've had, actually. So, but it's also the one of the easiest ones. <laughs> First off, tell us what this is. What year and what vehicle is it? Well, I bought a, a 1934 Ford hot rod that was done very badly. Yeah. All the bolts were loose, and it was uh, scary to drive. I didn't even drive it. But I was looking for the sheet metal because I wanted an all-steel body with no rust. Okay. So uh, I drug it home, pulled the body off, and sold everything else. And that's kind of where it started. And, and From a 34 Model A? Ford, yes. Model A Ford. Okay. Model A Ford. The get-go was wanted to try out this new uh, 2.8R Cummins. Yeah. And all of us in the four-wheel drive industry, when the 2.8 Cummins came out as a like a crate engine package, right. we were always thinking old flat fender Jeeps, CJ5s, you know, that that would be a great transplant right. for one of those older Jeeps. Right. You went a little older. You went, instead of in the <laughs> 40s and 50s, you put it in a 34. What's going on here with the cab? This is not normal. Well, I think back in 1934, uh, most of the guys were about 120 pounds and maybe about this high. That's They're, a third of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here you have two nice yeah they're jeep uh, seats yeah they are jeep seats yeah. cj seats in yeah, there they're jeeps and they pretty much touch in the middle that's how narrow the cab is right yes, yes. man i love the uh the the upholstery in there the yeah that, camo i had that left over from another build i like it it even has little oh there you go little nice. wooden drawer underneath yeah. there now some of the stuff i'm noticing in here is right off the bat uh swing pedal actually uh wanted kind of an old school approach on the pedals but i just didn't have the space yeah to put all of the um brake apparatus underneath the floor and this is the same stuff that happens with an early cj jeep or a willys pickup is that right. you can't get everything underneath the floor but it is not easy to get the swing pedal assembly in there well well Take a look when I pop the hood. Okay. Uh, it really worked out nicely because I dropped the engine down enough to where I could take the brake apparatus out on top of the Hover engine. Hover over top and of the engine. Exactly. Yeah. And it worked out just fine. So you have uh, this. Uh, uh, That's it's a, got it's a manual transmission. I see the clutch there. Well, yeah. it's a Jeep. It's an AX15. Okay. New I got, uh, and then it's got a Dana 300 transfer with case. twin sticks. Twin so, sticks. This, and we haven't even told anybody yet, I guess they're kind of gathering why we're here, that this is a four-wheel drive. That was the other request. It was the <laughs> diesel and then the four-wheel drive that kind of drove this project. This a heater right here? That's an air conditioner. So heater. you actually do have working AC in oh, here? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Sure, sure. So air conditioning, and then what do you got going here? Uh, it's just a stereo. Just an old, old stereo, or yeah. new, actually. You know, um, they, they've dropped the price on those nowadays, you know, it's amazing how cheap they are. Yep. And then just some classic gauges in there. Yeah. Um, I wanted to keep it simple. But this is not a factory cab. So how much space did you add to the back of the cab in order to fit this? Well, I, I moved the cab. I sectioned it and added one foot. So okay. the, the width of the window, I just cut it right down here and stretched the cab one foot, which is... Enough, but in retrospect, if anybody's watching this is going to do something, you might think about 16 inches instead of 12. You well, know? you know, that extra four inches counts. You know? Yeah, that's, that's what, what they she say. said. Yeah. <laughs> well, tilt column in it. Yeah. Um, definitely comfortable to sit in. Five-speed manual, really cool. Yeah. Um, all the little details, the dome light, um, you know, the window flipping out. There's your secondary AC, oh, yeah. right? It's got a yep. scoop on the cowl, too, actually. And, you got that five window window uh, Chevy look, you know. I mean, you got two extra windows on this thing, right? Yeah. So uh, it's not bad to drive in. It's I uh, spent a lot of effort with insulation and soundproofing. Uh, in fact, I used a horse mat, a three quarter inch rubber horse oh, okay. mat for yeah. a horse stall on the floor, and I cut that out, and that's actually over the dynamat. So, it's, got so a, it's dynamat, horse mat, and then carpet. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's amazing. So it's got a lot of, uh, you know, buffer in between me and the engine. And with the Cummins, there's a lot of rattle to that. There so, is. You know, well, let's open the hood and look at that. Okay, well, this is the, this, 
what we were talking about as far as the brakes. Okay, so you got a HydroBoost set up, so okay. HydroBoost brakes. Yeah, I'm kind of a fan of the HydroBoost. So are we, we put them on everything. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so I had to use a big bore on both of these to, uh, with the- So this is your clutch master, yes. right? Yeah. And with the swing pedals, you don't maybe have all the stroke that you really need. Since you hand kind of fabricated it. Yeah. So with the big bore, a little bit of movement gives you enough to actuate the clutch. That's the key. And it's the same thing on the Hydroboost, you put a big bore, it only moves a little bit, but right. you're pushing the fluid to the brakes properly. Right. That makes a big difference. Yep. So, so start with a big bore. <laughs> I see you have the computer mounted right on the firewall for the... Well, I couldn't find a, a more logical place for it. It, yeah. it, uh, it isn't gonna get wet there. It's probably all sealed up anyway, but it, it's a, it's a good place to get out of the way. This is the water pump then, right? Yes. So, water, boy, look at all that TIG work and running tubes and hoses. Yeah. That is a lot of it work. It's tight. This is a Jeep. Uh, That's a JK steering box, steering right? Steering box, you So betcha. it's forward-facing pitman arm. Yep. You had to have a couple idlers for your steering shaft, huh? A little so, bit, yeah. It was a yep, little... To it was jog around the engine. Kind of nip and tuck to get all that to fit in, went and closed the hood. Yep. Well, so. that's really tight, so it looks good, though. The uh, radiator is out of a Massey Ferguson tractor. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. The, uh, most of the uh, truck and car radiators, are, they stop at about 18 inches in the width. Uh -huh. But tractors, you can get them down to 15 inches wide. So it's narrow and tall. Very narrow and tall, still okay. a four core. Yeah. But I needed something here to get inside of the steering gear. Yeah, the steering box is very close to the radiator. So we've got basically the intercooler and then in front of that is the air conditioning. Radiators. So could we open up the other side? Of the, maybe see the turbo one. over there, yeah. right? Yeah. You can't open both sides of the hood at once. No, that's that's one of the things that Henry didn't do right. And the apple right here is because you are Gary yeah. Apple. An apple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, on this side, we've got uh, just the basics, but it's got a small uh, spinner in there. Well, look how tiny that turbo housing yeah. is. I mean, it just looks miniature. They do make an aftermarket. Yeah. Uh, and they, this is stock, I think, 160 horse. And how many foot pounds of torque? I think it's 300. Yeah, gotcha. And, and uh, they've got bolt ons basically that will bring it on up to about uh, 250. Yeah. 240, 250. So you got radiator overflow right, right here. Right. Um, and then this looks That's like power steering? Power steering, okay. right, right. And then what is this little guy right here? That is a uh, diverter for the air conditioner okay. heater. Oh, so you shut off the hot, the hot water and, when and you're just, using yeah, the Yeah, this is a valve that just loops it back to the engine and then in AC days you shove that over. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. You would think it'd be easy to put a four-cylinder diesel in here, but it is not, is it? I mean, there's no space it for was anything. A, it was a tight fit. Yeah. And trying to keep everything inside of the line of the hood was, the, and I ended up, you know, moving the firewall back uh, four or five inches. Oh, did you? On this, uh, so I could set everything back in a ways. And where did you, you just section back in on the firewall? Yeah. Oh, I see that box cut in there. Yeah, yep. that box was basically new. So stuck the firewall back four or five right. inches. Right. So the frame on this is a combination of uh, two by four tube and, uh -huh. and two by six tube. Both of them are three sixteenths wall. So it's probably the frame itself was almost a thousand pounds. <laughs> I'm looking at the frame. One of the things that you did that's really unique is uh, right here, you curve the top of that box frame in the shape of the fender so it would still line up with the fender, correct? Right, they, you know, the whole idea of that was is all of the sheet metal is stock. So on. this fender bolts on, this curved section going over the top, right. bolting on the back, that's all just a stock. That's a stock curve. Ford fender, yeah. yeah. Stock curve. So underneath here, this is where we came in. So you called up Alan and said, I'm building a four wheel drive, you know, Model A, and he put together a pair of axles for you, and I believe they're Wagoneer axles, correct? Uh, I think they are. We the didn't want the tires sticking out. Right. So it's spring under, Wagoneer 44, um, Everything's been gone through on it and... Uh, wildwood brakes. Wildwood brakes. You have basically Jeep springs on it, I think, right? You know, I'm not sure what they fit, to be honest with you. Yeah, <laughs> something we, you came up with. I started with. with a seven leaf spring and I kept adding and subtracting and I, yeah. I'm down to, I think, five leaves. 
Yep. And I, uh, and then I put bags on the back, but I took them out. I, I was going to build a camper on the back of this and make it kind of old school looking like to match the same architecture, but yeah. I'm not sure that's going to really happen yet. Look at that. You yeah. even sunk a winch into the frame. Yeah, tuck that down in there. And it's so far down, it's not blocking airflow, it's not doing anything. All right. All but right. can we get the crank in there to start <laughs> the engine? So full running boards, those are the factory running boards? No, that these, be on are, the model these are new. This is uh, one by two rectangular tubing. Okay, oh, you built it. And then <laughs> this, these are individual tubes. Uh -huh. And then I took some Sapelli, this is uh, kind of an African mahogany and made the strips kind of to give it a little bit of a different look and it also keeps your foot up off the paint it's unique it's pretty cool it is different the you gotta have the green gas cap that's right? where you put the goga juice <laughs> and so uh fill with diesel there and then obviously a tank between the frame rails yes yeah, yeah. now is the bed factory it's, length factory it's stock. width stock bed stock bed yeah stock um, bed. tell us about the wheels and hubcaps uh, they're just artillery wheels, 15 inch, with yeah. uh, the trim rings and the Ford hubcap. Um, I wanted something just really basic and simple, yeah, and uh, not a mag type, you know. Yeah, I mean it classically fits the build, which that, you had to cut the hole in the front ones for the locking hub to come out, right? Easy, easy to do. <laughs> easy to do. Yep. Yep. And um, I wanted a spare on this thing. So yeah, so I, I see a full-size spare tucked underneath. So I've got a crank mechanism that lowers that down when you have a flat. Oh, I see right here there's a little uh, a nut on the back. This must be where you turn it, huh? Yeah. Spin that and the, the, the tire lowers down, huh? Right. Right. Yep. Classic rear bumper, tailgate, you know, just, I mean, really it has a, a almost like a 50s rebuild vibe, you know, not too new at all. That was the goal. When we when Alan first built you the set of axles, uh, we were thinking ah five speed with an overdrive, but the Cummins has really low torque and with the turbo, so he did 307 gears in here thinking it would just cruise down the highway, right? Well, I had read about the 2.8 R Cummins and it. A lot of folks that uh, did those installs in. Uh, Jeeps and what have you, they were uh, talking about it being real happy at 1600 RPM. Yeah. Uh -huh. And at 1600 RPM, uh, you're lugging it down. I think you have a little more weight than a Jeep build, maybe. I think that, maybe that, that that's could right. be it. Yeah. So the 307s with the five speed wasn't working out, and we just put 373s in it now, T right? Today. And uh, you haven't got to drive it yet. Not yet. But if, if I had to take a guess, with that overdrive, yeah. um, that the 373s are going to get it a little bit It'll better be around in the sweet two, spot. 2,000 yeah. RPM. And I think okay. that's more realistic. Um, if you're, you know, to keep the turbo, I got a truth in advertising here. The turbo is kind of a, a real noisy. And, yeah. And so I'm not a f real fan of that myself, but... Um, some people like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but to keep the turbo kind of down and muted a little bit, you 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 can't, you know, you can't be lugging it and gather your foot in it because yep. it's just going to spin the turbo. Absolutely, you so, want it to roll right at the bottom of when the turbo kicks that's in. That's it. And at that, sixty-five. And yeah, at yep. sixty-five, around two thousand RPM, I think with these, uh, these tires are around twenty nines, I think something like that, and. Um, that should give me about 2,000 RPM, which is just about right. Air conditioning, power steering, rigid chassis, four-wheel drive, a Jeep, you know, AX15, a Jeep Dana 300 transfer case, which is gear-driven. Um, and heavy. Everything about this whole vehicle is amazing. Like, I would want to own it. I would want to drive it. I'd want to load it up and cruise it around town. <laughs> and the interior with, with the... Uh, you know that the kind camo. of camo duck theme yeah, um, yeah. just has me going, and I and I especially like those seats. Those are comfortable seats. So they are. Every aspect of what you've done here is uh, yeah. absolutely perfect. So well, it's all new except for the Henry Ford sheet metal. Yeah, there you go. Everything else. Well, thank you, Gary. Thanks uh, for appreciate all Appreciate your... you uh, showing us the truck. Yeah, and uh, thanks to WFO for giving me a helping hand getting all the big heavy lifting stuff going here. Well, no problem. We we love it.